Hi, this is Amey Abhyankar from FinQuest Institute. In this video, we'll discuss one popular options trading strategy which we call as a bull call spread. So before we go to the strategy, uh, let's quickly understand uh, the payoff conditions for a call option. We'll assume a plain vanilla European option. So the payoff condition for a call option is given as where C is the value of my call option, ST is the value of the underlying asset at maturity capital T, K is my strike price. So this is what we call as the payoff equation. We will be using this payoff equation when we analyze the option trading strategy which we will discuss shortly. So as a part of bull call spread, we are, are taking on two call options. So we purchase one call option with a strike price at K1 and we sell a call option with a strike price at K2. Both of these call options are, are on the exact same underlying and they have the same time to maturity capital T. So let's try to understand the payoffs in all the three regions. So when I say all three regions, uh, we'll see the stock price uh, at maturity lower than K1, stock price between K1 and K2 and stock price greater than K2. So we'll write the three scenarios below. So scenario one will be ST less than K1. Scenario two will be ST in between K1 and K2. Just draw a dotted line here to differentiate them. And we have a ST greater than K2. So here we have taken the three scenarios which the stock, the underlying stock price can take at maturity time point. Now let's try to understand the payoff conditions for both of these call options. So we'll look at the call option struck at K1 first, which we call as the long call. So I'll just change the color of the ink. So a long call and this has been struck at K1 and there is a short call which has been struck at K2. So let's start to write the payoff equation. So we are going to use this same equation which we have used studied earlier for understanding both of these options. So Focusing on the call option struck at K1, whenever the stock price at maturity is less than K1, we will be having a value of 0 on in this scenario. Because if I simply plug in this value into my payoff condition, I will get a max of, so imagine let's put some numbers. So let's say K is 50. Now if the stock price at maturity, ST, happens to be, let's say 40, then I have a condition c equal to max of minus 10 or 0. So I'll get a payoff of 0 here. Now whenever the stock price is between K1 and K2, then yes, I will get a payoff on this because the stock price at maturity has risen above K1. So my payoff is going to be ST minus K1. In scenario 2 as well, I'll have a payoff because the stock price is rising. So again, my payoff will continue to be ST minus K1. So one point to be noted here is your stock price, I mean your payoff should always be dependent on K1 here because my option has been struck at K1. So no matter how high the stock price rises at maturity, uh, your payoff will always be vis-a-vis -vis what the strike price is which is K1. So even if my stock price rises above K2, still my call option payoff continues to be ST minus K1. It will not be ST minus K2. Now let's take the second option, which is a short call at K2. So in the first scenario, ST less than K1, again the payoff is going to be 0, using the similar logic which we studied for the earlier option. Now when the stock price is between K1 and K2, again this is going to be 0, because this option has a strike price at K2, and if the stock price at maturity is less than K2, then the payoff would be 0. And if the stock price is greater than K2, then this option is going to yield a payoff, which will be given as ST minus K2. However, in this case, there will be a negative sign in front of this. The negative sign is used to signify 
that this is a short call position. So you have minus into bracket the call payoff which is ST minus K2. We can also write the total payoff for the three scenarios. So looking at scenario number one, ST less than K1. So let's write this as the total. So here my total payoff would be zero. In the second scenario, ST between K1 and K2, the payoff is going to be ST minus K1. And in the third scenario, the total payoff will be K2 minus K1. So I have simply summed up the payoffs for individual call options and I have arrived at the total payoff for all of the three scenarios. Here we have taken a simplified assumption that there are no transaction costs or brokerages involved to keep the equation simple because we are trying to understand the logic first. Subsequently, you can make adjustments to these payoff conditions to take into consideration the, uh, the transaction costs and charges which are involved. Going back to the diagram for a moment, you see that uh, so the distance from here, so let's call this distance as x and let's call this distance as y. So these distances actually explain the option premium. So we know that whenever we are purchasing an option, we have to pay a premium to the option seller and whenever we are selling an option, then we receive a premium from the option buyer. So that's what we try and signify through this x and y. Now, there's a reason why these distances X and Y, that is the premiums associated with the two options are different. That's because if we assume that the market is rising, then there is a higher probability for the call which has been struck at K1 to end in the money as compared to the probability of the call which has been struck at K2 to end up in the money. And because of this higher probability associated with the call option struck at K1, it carries a higher option premium as compared to the other call option. That's why X is greater than Y. So the main rationale to enter into this strategy is whenever we expect the market to rise in the near term, then traders may go in for a bull call spread so that uh, they can capitalize on the rising market such that the call which has been purchased at K1 may yield a positive payoff. Now the reason why a, a, a second call is sold at K2 is to adjust the premium because whenever we are purchasing an option, it's a cash outlay or a cash outflow for the tra trader because they are paying an upfront premium to the seller. So in order to compensate the amount of premium which is flowing out, we sell a call at K2 so that the overall premium which has been paid out comes down. So on a net net basis, our overall premium outlay is going to be lower. Because finally, whenever we are calculating the option payoff or the profit on a trader's book, the premiums are going to start eating up into the profits. So traders will definitely try their best to bring down the amount of premiums which they are paying as a part of the options trade. Whenever a trader expects a market to rise in the near term, this is a very popular strategy which you will see being used by market participants. We'll, we'll explore more such interesting strategies in our future video. Thank you.